Hello everyone's Forest Focus, it's day three of celebrating Nottingham Forest famous win at Liverpool. So joining me to discuss the game and reflect on how good or bad Forest are from a neutral point of view, delighted to say, is the BBC's leading football commentator Guy Mowbray. Guy, good to have you with us, are you well? I am, yeah. Uh, forgive me if I just look a little tired, but it's a, it's one of those weeks, busy Champions League weeks, so we're not getting into the early hours and then we're back on the road again and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all good stuff, we're up and running, but um, yeah, these, these mornings do take care on you. <laughs> well, like I say, it's super good of you to, to do it because I know you're busy, uh, like say, commentating uh, in Europe. Did you say before we started, did you do Liverpool last night? Liverpool's game last night, that was for anybody outside the UK to get hold of. It goes across on a, a, a number of networks right around the world. And and then I will be at the Etihad tonight for BBC's new Champions League highlight show, which is... Uh, very exciting. We've got we've got Champions League football on the BBC for the first time, and big European football back on the BBC for the first time in probably just over two decades, I think. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be a hopefully an exciting night. No doubt, no doubt. I mean, I did think we broke in Liverpool last about three minutes at the San Siro. Yeah. I thought Forest had finished them, but I know they they came back to win. But um, obviously, you were at Anfield. We captured the the focus of the the wider media uh, as Forest beating Liverpool. I think the pundits have been, you know, very generous in their assessments generally that it, it wasn't smash and grab and we deserved it. What did you make of it? No, no, that's it. Exactly right. Um, fully deserved. There's no doubt, by the way, a few Forest fans gave me a bit of stick um, on social media because I said Forest were very impressive against a below par Liverpool. I can't see any part of that that's factually incorrect. Liverpool were not on their game. Forest made them look that way in part, to be quite honest, because they were superb. Every single player turned up and, and did exactly the job that Nuno requested of them. And, and they, they were deserved winners. And I think Liverpool would admit that themselves. Um, they, they, they were done a job on. Um, I think that the fullbacks, it's the best display I've ever seen, probably, against Mohamed Salah from uh, Alex Moreno, was, was just ter tremendous. And that, that's not the player I remember at Aston Villa. So if, if that's what's to come for Forrest, then, then exciting times from him. Um, Ainer on the other side, the centre-backs look a magnificent partnership. Um, I, I don't think you could pick fault, actually, with, with any player out there. Yeah, I mean, I'll come back to some individuals because I want to pick on that, up on that, certainly. I suppose, I think you're right, because if Liverpool turn up and perform to their maximum, they're going to they're gonna win the game, really. But is there also an element that we, by doing a job on them, made them play badly to some degree, particularly like players like Salah, like you mentioned? You can yeah, make, make, make them hurry, make, make, make them make bad decisions or... or, or decisions that they normally wouldn't make and, and it's because they were getting frustrated because they weren't allowed to play their normal game because I think Nuno got his game plan absolutely spot on and um, it's certainly the best I've seen Forrest play under him. Um, I've seen I've seen some very good games by the way you know, you know at the City ground I remember the game against Liverpool actually towards the back end of last season um, when, when Nunes scored in the 165th minute. Um, yes, yeah I've got yeah, I, yeah, I remember that game, and and again, Forest were probably, arguably, the better team throughout large parts of that as well. So there have been good performances, but I think this was this was the best I've seen. Is that in part when you talk about Nuno? Because probably with all due respect, we've got better players this season, like Milenkovic and and Moreno. It must make his job a bit a bit easier, certainly. Yeah, the the squad looks better. The squad looks trimmer as well. Um, it's not as bloated as it was. Um, they, they've got rid of some of the players who weren't going to play that much of a part. Um, I, I just think it looks generally a better quality, leaner a, a, and, and better for it. Um, yeah, there's, there's there's no doubt about that. So, so yeah, it, but, but credit to him as well, because he knows what he's trying to do with the squad now. I think he's taken a little bit of time to settle in. Of course he would. I mean, you take over barely halfway through a season and, and you've, you've got a bit of remedial work to do first. And I would think that's what last season was was mainly about. But but this season he can he can... It's the old cliche, but he can put his stamp on it and, and make them play as he wants to see them play. Did we um, did we get Liverpool at a good time in the sense they'd not gone behind in a game? There were a few things that they hadn't been tested on, and um, slot. Um, it's not in the matrix. He started ever so well, but Nuno probably did a job on him, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure about a good time though. I mean, they'd, you know, they'd won every game going into that match and hadn't conceded yeah, a goal, yeah. so confidence would have been really high. And 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 back at Anfield, maybe the the good timing is after an international break. Um, I think the statistics. I don't have the exact numbers to hand, but I think they do show that the likes of Manchester City, Liverpool, after 
early season European games, not necessarily once the season's up and running and flowing, but those early season ones, they are a little bit out of rhythm maybe as they come back. But that said, every single Premier League club has a lot of international players flying all around the world. There isn't one that doesn't have a good number of, and obviously by definition, they're key players going around the world. So I, I don't think you can use that as an excuse, but it is a fact that they, they, do, they do sometimes. I, I think the games actually are a slightly lower in overall quality early season after internationals. I, I thought the first half on Saturday wasn't the greatest show because both teams actually gave the ball away quite a lot. They looked a little bit rusty. Um, and, and I think the general feeling at half time was, well, Liverpool will, will be better second half and will probably win this. Although I, I, I remember having a chat with, with, with my producer at the game and we were just saying, this this does have the stamp of a, of a 1-0 away win this. This does have that sort of feel to it. It, it was scoring that scoring the first goal was, was was obviously key. If Liverpool had got it, I think they'd have won the game and Forrest got it and then never actually looked in any danger once they got it. It, it, it was it, you didn't ever really think, no, they'll, 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 they'll come back and win this. Whereas, you know, I, I watched Liverpool in Milan last night and maybe the goal came too early against them, I don't know, but there was kind of an inevitability that they were the better team by a mile last night. Is there a, a, like an Anfield factor as well? You'd have commentated that there many times. Like Virgil van Dijk's record at Anfield feels mm. inevitable that eventually they'll, they'll get something. Is that is that always a factor in games that thinks makes you think actually Liverpool will come back here because it's Anfield? Just the quality of the team and, and, and Anfield actually wasn't. <laughs> I don't think you can describe it as a stadium because it's you know it's not a not a human entity, is it? But it wasn't itself. Mm. On Saturday, and I did read a report actually in in the Liverpool Echo when you you're going through things after the game, um, and I read one of the match reports and I'm catching up on my stats, and it did say it's the sort of atmosphere, and the sort of game that Jurgen Klopp would have been furious with, because ten minutes to go, five minutes to go, there's quite a lot leaving early. Mm. Well, if you think about the, the the history of that place and the European nights particularly that they have, that that doesn't happen. You're not supposed to do that. They, you know, they win things late on. Um, and, and it never looked likely. But maybe, again, what it's the chicken and egg situation. But perhaps their fans had realised, you know what, this, this isn't going to happen today, so they'd had enough. I, I can never do that, even when I go and watch York City, because my wife is absolutely, no, you do not leave early. You know, even sometimes you think, you know, oh, two, three minutes, let's let's get to the pub, let's, let's beat the traffic. But now my, my wife is, no, you, you just don't do that. So I'm not allowed to anyway, no matter what game I'm at. <laughs> How often do you get to watch York City? Well, I, I can proudly state I've got a record. I, you know, I've been doing this job 30 years now. Um, and I can proudly state I have not missed a home game I could physically have attended in all that time. And, and I intend to keep that going. I've, I've already seen them three times this season, uh, one away, twice at home. Um, and I'm, I'm always checking the calendar to make sure I can get there whenever, whenever I can. And we are top of the National League right now. And we will be back in the Football League next season. I'm, I'm very confident about that. Actually, there's a there's a very famous game. For us, it's famous. It won't be for you lot. But whenever the old games come on, on the big match revisited, etc., one of the York games that's nearly always replayed is um, is a game against Forest from the is it from the early eighties or the late seventies? I can't remember which. But um, there's there's a game from then that's that's always on. Um, York playing at the City Ground in their bizarrely sort of amber away kit, which I don't think we've ever had since, um, and we lost. And there we are. There'll be people who watch this who will remember that, no doubt. Yeah. You know. I, I've been to, I've not been to New York, I've been to Booth and Crescent in my old, one of my old jobs was covering them when they're in the league. It, lovely ground. Has the new ground lost the charm or is it not? No, nice? bizarrely not. And we thought that would be the case. Um, I mean, I know Forest have got their own sort of ground issues at the moment, whether to build or redevelop or, mm. or whatever. And I would imagine most Forest fans are absolutely, I don't know, I've not read enough about it, but vehemently opposed to any idea of a new ground. No, we, we must be where, where home is. Um, and a lot of York fans, I know it's small fry compared to Forest, but a lot of York fans, we were the same. You, you can't possibly leave leave the place. Um, but you know what? Within the first season, people took to it. And the facilities are better. Crowds are up. Um, we're getting 5,000 regularly now. Um, average gate well into the high four thousands, um, and and it's it's home. It's become home very very quickly. The atmosphere is great. The atmosphere behind the goal from the south stand is, is terrific. They're only, well, I, I'm of an age I can call them juveniles. They're fantastic. They are they are absolutely great. They, they sometimes cross the line behaviour wise, but um, honestly, they're, they're they're brilliant for our club because the atmosphere for a, for a national league club, the atmosphere is. I don't think you'll find anything better down there, but I I would say that, wouldn't I? Anyway, enough about. City, let's talk. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I love non-league football. I used to cover it for years. Uh, it's proper football as well. Because uh, the Premier League does feel a bit artificial sometimes, certainly. But yeah, non-league's great. Um, one of the things you, you were talking about the back four there, um, which I wanted to pick up on. What, what were you, when you say the Moreno you haven't seen, was he defensively susceptible when you've seen no, him before or not? Not necessarily. I just I just thought, well, he's a fullback. There we are. He's a fullback. He's top level quality. Yeah, he's in his 30s now. Um, didn't see a lot of him in Spain before he joined Villa. Not particularly, not that, that I really remember of him. Um, but Villa, he always looked good. I, 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 I do think there must have been a toss of the coin at Villa as to who they let go between Luca Dean and, and, and Moreno. And Dean's got the nod and is playing by all accounts very, very well. Um, so one of them had to go for presumably squad and budget reasons. Moreno out he goes for the year, and I, I, yeah, I, he's, he's, a, he's a he's a quality player. There's no doubt about it. He wouldn't be playing at the top level if he wasn't. But I never saw a standout fullback that could absolutely mark Salah out of the game and make him so frustrated he was you know taking pot shots and giving the ball away. Um, no, he was he was he was truly outstanding, and he probably just shaded my man of the match on us from Aina on the other side and Milenkovic and Murillo in the middle. And, and Ward Prowse as well is another one who deserves... I, I still can't work that out. That That's one that's, that I can't get. Um, I was at a West Ham game last season at home to Burnley where they weren't very good and he particularly wasn't very good and, and Calvin Phillips was there as well and they both got taken off half-time and, and they, they didn't have good games at all. I remember Gareth Southgate was there watching actually and I, and I did wonder if... That was curtains for the pair of them as regards the Euros, and, and it probably was. But still, you know about James Ward Prowse's qualities, and I, I, again, it's probably it's probably FFP and balancing books and making sure that you can only have so many on and a certain wage bill and what have you. So that's probably one of the reasons why West Ham had to had to let him go. But it, it, it's quite telling that I don't think there's any option to buy or anything like that. So um, it, he's, he's only at Forest for the season. As things stand, but what a what a signing for a season! I mean, he's one of the best midfielders in the country. He, he has been for quite a while. Is that a sign of Forest's kind of progress towards establishing themselves then in this league? <sighs> Maybe um, I'm more I'm old school and 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 you know been around long enough to remember times past. And I, I just think if Nottingham Forest come calling, you, I mean. <laughs> If you've got any knowledge of any history of football, well, hang on a minute. Double European champions, yeah, I think I'll I'll have a bit of that. So it's it's if you're not if you're not going to get a game or you're not going to be a regular at West Ham, where else would you want to go? Hmm. Um, and the other one, Milenkovic, I really wanted to pick up and Murillo. Actually, ask you about Murillo, but Milenkovic. When you watched us last season in the previous two seasons, did you feel like we were a bit of a soft touch defensively, particularly from set pieces? We developed that reputation yeah. certainly. I never, I never felt it was particularly settled. I don't think um, Steve Cooper at the start of last season or Nuno, when he, I, I don't think they ever quite knew who the, the first choice pairing was at the back. I mean, Murillo played pretty much every game last year. He settled in straight away. But who do you put alongside him? Was it Canate? Was it, you know, was it Felipe when he was fit? It, it never seemed to be quite settled. And and here we go. There is now a partnership there. Um, and having watched um, Strahinja Pavlovic for Milan against Liverpool last night, and then you look at his compatriot Milenkovic. Well, on that showing, there's no comparison. Forrest got the better the better partner there, without a doubt. And what do you make of Murillo? He's so highly touted. Obviously, he's got the kind of the samba flair going going forwards. But do you see the makings of a of an elite defender there yet? Or is he no, yeah, yeah, he's, he's he's there. He's, he's he's Premier League top level quality. There's there's no doubt about it. And, and that was obvious last season, actually. Um, yeah, he's he's kind of a little bit old school in terms of. I think it's just his stature makes him look that way. Um, he can play, obviously he can, but he, he's a bit old school as well. And actually, talking of giants, I got my first look uh, outside the away dressing room when I was about to do interviews on Saturday at, at Carlos Miguel. Goodness me! Uh, I mean, I don't know how agile he is, but blimey, he'll take some beating. He is huge. Yeah, no, he's he's only played the one game, and he looked he did look really well, really good. So it'll be interesting to see how he pushes um, Matt, Matt Sell. Certainly, just before I throw some more questions at Guy, just a quick word for our sponsors, the Trent Navigation. Obviously, next home game is Fulham. Uh, Steve McGill is doing his eighties and nineties mixtape. He plays at the Nab a lot, so you'll probably be familiar with him. But get down and support that. And this is coming out on a Wednesday. Uh, here's an unprepared question that I'll I'll throw at Guy, but it's Pete tonight, eight pound fifty tonight. Uh, I've sampled them myself, and they are top notch. So uh, do get down the nap. If you're looking for a cheap dinner tonight, Guy, I ask loads of guests their favourite pizza. You're probably like the 20th person. We've had a variety of answers. I'll put you on the spot. What's your favourite pizza? 
Right, well, I'm going to get hate mail now, <laughs> without a doubt, because it, it's ham and pineapple. Sorry. Oh, no. It <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It does belong on pizza. It's a perfect combination, and uh, nothing will dissuade me from it. So I'm afraid, yeah, very, very old and traditional. And never mind what the Italians might say, pineapple does very much belong on a pizza. We're going to get, there's going to be stuff in the comments like 90% of the game and 10% of you seeing you about pizza. Um, People say, I knew it. I knew he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what about going forwards then? Obviously, we didn't we didn't start the wingers, but they grabbed the headlines. Obviously, you know, clean sheets keep you in the league. Probably goals get you up the league. Have we got enough going forwards that makes you think we can do quite well this season? Yeah, I think so. I think you'll do quite well anyway. I, I, I've never never been any doubt about that. You know, you're looking at possibly top 10, 10th, 11th, 12th would be probably about right, I think, as things are. It might be better than that. I, I certainly can't see it being any worse than that. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I think Hudson, Adoy and Elanga are exciting enough for any team. Um, they're certainly... They're of an age now, particularly Hudson Odoi now, where it's it's it's, co it's coming, it's there. Whatever they've shown in the past is is there to show on a more consistent basis now. So um, there's no problem there. I like the little glimpse I got of Jota Silva, mm -hmm. um, especially when he outjumped Van Dijk to flip one on. I mean, I'm, to be fair, I think a bit much was made of that. If I'm totally honest, because Van Dijk, the position he was in, Jota Silva was favourite to win it anyway. To be honest, but um, but yeah, it, it was a nice little nice little cameo from him. And Chris Wood gets the critics, but you, you just look at his record. You, you, you can't knock it. You, you really can't. And 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 again, he would be. I don't think you'd look out of place in any Premier League squad. Maybe not starting, but as somebody to bring on. Um, and for, in the Forest case, to start. Um, and I want he waiting in the wings for his chance because, as, as we know, on his day he can be anything. So. I think I think I think there's enough there. I mean, pr the proof will be at the end of the season, but I I would think there would be. Yeah, um, I'll come back to that. It's interesting. What about Gibbs White? Because obviously he's such a talent. We love him. He got into the England squad. I kind of wonder if he'll be able to keep his place in there when everyone's fit and available with Bellingham and Foden. Do you think he's still got a challenge to? To take that step to be a regular in the squad, of course, because the two players you mentioned, yeah, that, that's that's kind of the next level up, if you like, in, in very very small degrees of level, as as we know, professional sport works like that. It's very very fine margins to take you right up to the next level. Um, but he's not far behind. And certainly, whilst Lee Carls is in charge, there there is every chance of him staying in the squad because he's he's one of his England boys, isn't he? So um, I, I I can I can very much see him sticking around. And what when you say tenth to to twelfth, that's interesting because a lot of pundits uh, have us down for seventeenth and probably lower at the start of the season. Quite a few people said, "What is it that you see that makes you you think we've got a, a, that next level of quality that we probably didn't have the last two years?" It's it's as I said earlier, it's the it's the it's the the, the leanness and the quality of the of the squad and the fact that I think I think Nuno knows now what he wants and what he's got. Um, and, and his record in the Premier League as well, you know, with with Wolves before, he he, he knows what it takes. Um, I don't think it's going to be scintillating football all the time, but because of what I've mentioned already with Hudson Odoi and Elanga and the exciting players, it, it's not going to be bad, is it? It's it's going to be okay to watch. Goodness me, especially at home, there'll be there'll be some wonderful performances in there. So um, no, I, 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 I'm just thinking that there's got to be. And I'm obviously I've only seen one game live, but. There are eight worst teams in Forest in the Premier League. I mean, I, I don't think you'd be hard pushed to argue against that. I would think. Um, I mean, I'm not going to name them because <laughs> I'll, I'll name somebody. <laughs> somebody. So um, I'm, I'm not going to name anybody. But I, I would argue I, I'm pretty sure there'll be eight worst teams in Forest in the Premier League this season. Yeah, you, I, at the start of the season, we all said on here, and uh, we all said 14th to 15th. Um, but I think we're all kind of maybe re-evaluating. It's difficult to know so early in the season because you look at Palace and West Ham and Bournemouth, certainly Palace and Bournemouth, I think have probably played better than their results and maybe Wolves as well. So, yeah, it's I, interesting. I've put, I've put Palace right now slightly below Forest, slightly below. Um, losing Elise was a, was a big deal. Um, Eze is obviously a, a tremendous talent and I really rate their manager. I think it, what, what a job he did last season, Oliver Glasner. So um, they'll be up there. They started a little slowly, but they'll, they'll be around, probably around Forest. I think probably that's that's almost the direct rival, I would say. Bournemouth, no, I think Forest are better than them. I am naming teams now, so I'm going to stop <laughs> before I get into trouble. But um, I, I, 
you know, at Brentford again. Brent, Brentford I have a funny relationship with because I watch them on the TV and I, I see their results and I look at their players and I, I keep stats on all the Premier League teams and look at all the numbers. And they're brilliant. They're phenomenal. Every time I go to a Brentford game, they're awful. <laughs> so um, the worry is I think I've got them in October at home to Ipswich and I'd worry Brentford fans if I turn up because they're, they're just awful every time I've seen them live. But when I watch them on the TV, they're terrific. Oh, Forest fans will want you to commentate on Brentford every week then because we, we don't like them. I don't know. I think it's because Thomas Frank uh, kept I did Forest Brentford actually last season. I did that game last season. So, uh, yeah, I, I got the feeling there was a little bit in there. Yeah, I don't know what it goes back to. Thomas Frank's, uh, I think Forest fans dislike him because um, he, he, he fell out with Cooper and I don't think Cooper's right. staff and uh, Frank's staff get on particularly well. But So I think it's slightly historical. But well, the, the uh, first ever game I, I covered, age 21, for club call, was York City nil, Brentford two, oh, um, right. and we're in the same division, League One, as it now is. Um, so yeah, I think I have a historical kind of. Uh, I don't dislike them, but perhaps a, there's a little bit in there in my head against. We should be there. York should be where Brentford. Are. <laughs> That's upsetting. Um, what do you think about Wrexham? Just out of curiosity, they're sort of a similar sized club to York. You just think, why is that? No, they're, they're a, I'll, I'll be honest. I think they're a bit bigger than us in their catchment area, and that they're, they're sort yeah. of. Yeah, they're crowds. I think they, they, I think they could lay claim to be a little bit bigger. I, I, I don't mind the Wrexham story. I think it's a bit of fun. Um, they had a look, you know. I, I, I'm reliably informed that, that Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney had a look at York and had a look at Hartlepool as well as, as part of their project. I think, I think again, I might be wrong. I think the reason why, I think, I think they thought York was too nice a place and wouldn't have the sort of atmosphere. Well, they haven't heard our South stand in full effect. So, uh, anyway, we're, we're very happy with our lot right now. So, good luck to yeah. you. Yeah, lovely York and the Shambles doesn't play quite as well in a Netflix documentary about. No, maybe not. And we beat Arsenal in the FA Cup before they did. So, exactly, exactly. Uh, just lastly, on on Forest um, and Nuno, do you sort of see when he was at Wolves, he had a squad that was quite tight knit, a way of playing, a, a core of key players. Do you kind of think we might be moving that way now? He's had time in a pre season, kind of a replica. You could see it. You could see it on Saturday, and actually. Um, both Anthony Alanga, who I saw, I was standing there watching him doing interview for um, for the Overseas Networks. Um, he said it, and then unprompted, he didn't hear it. Callum Hudson Odoi came out, and I talked to him, and he said it as well. And both of them were keen to make the point, unprompted. We, we didn't mind being left out today. We, we trust the process. We trust the manager, and we're together as a team. And they both said it, and they're clearly on message. And 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 you got the feeling this wasn't scripted. This wasn't sort of a, a press officer led thing. This was just how they felt about it. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's there. I think he's got it now. I think he's got got the group that he wants. Do you? Because you're in the tunnels after games, or you can probably sense if there's a good vibe in a squad or not. A lot, a lot of people said there is at Forest. Obviously, when you've won at Anfield, everyone's going to be upbeat. Yeah. But it yeah. feels like a happy bunch. Yeah, yeah, and I must admit, I've been at the City Ground at times last season. You know, when when they've lost and. Um, there hasn't been that same atmosphere in the tunnel area. Um, so, yeah, it, by the way, whoever's in charge of the music, they've got to turn that down, especially places like Anfield, where the interview area is straight outside the visiting dressing room, and it makes it nigh on impossible to do, to do a post-match interview. But, but nobody's going to go in there and say, turn it down. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> Goodness no, me. No. But, uh, no, but I, did, I, did find it quite, I did find it quite curious, this coming from the club where uh, the, the great man, that, that famous story with Wimbledon's ghetto blaster, as it was, you know, it, it's quite ironic now that Forrest are the noisiest bunch around. <laughs> that was what I was going to say. I was going to reference that story about Vinnie Jones and the ghetto blaster. Yeah, I think it's Olorena who who uh, picks the music. But yeah, I know uh, Harry Toffolo was said was moaning about it after as well. One of our own players. So um, <laughs> I was going to uh, post match interviews. I was I was going to ask you about because mm. not all commentators do them, I don't think, all the time. Match the day guys do. Yeah. Is it something yeah. you sometimes dread if you've got a particular manager who who's lost uh, and you think, oh, God, this is going to be going to be hard work? I guess you don't know that with slot yet, but sometimes you think, oh, please, I, I, I'm neutral, but I wouldn't mind if a result goes a particular way today just to make my life a bit easier. You never, never think like that and never dread it, but sometimes it is definitely more of a challenge. The hardest thing I find is, is because we do all the interviews ourselves, because Actually, they were kind of a one-man band. You know, we, we turn up and do the commentary. And the hardest thing is just coming off the back of a of a commentary, which, and again, I'll take this opportunity. There are still some people who presumably still think the earth's flat who insist that we're not there and we do it afterwards and we only do five minutes and that's all they show. 
the whole game's going live somewhere to somebody, and we we I, I certainly do. You commentate live. The, the whole it makes no difference to me if it's live or cut down later. And having been on the other side of it early in my career, I have edited games. It's a lot easier to edit games when the commentator's just doing it. It's it's a lot easier. So no, everything's done live. We are there every game as. You can see because we go down to the tunnel and do the interview afterwards. Um, and that, that can sometimes, your head is all over the place. There's a good 10, 15 minute period after a game where you're trying to process, what have I just seen? What happened? You forget little moments that might actually be big moments to, to the managers. Um, and in the past, it has been really, really difficult. I, I, I don't, I enjoy getting to know, I don't think you can ever really know them these days and the Premier League being as it is, but I, I enjoy seeing and having a little bit of off-air chat with the managers and you maybe find out a few little nuggets that help. Um, but I don't enjoy the interviews, the ten because they have to be so quick and there is a Premier League ruling on this that they're sort of within so many minutes of full time that they have to be done. I'd rather actually wait half an hour and have considered thoughts when everybody's calmed down a bit. It might not make for as good television, but it certainly made my life a bit easier um, because all it takes is one wrong word and that you don't mean, but that could put them off. But that could send them loopy with you, and you know you, you've got and you've got to know the personalities of the different managers. You know which buttons you can press and which buttons not you can't press because you've got to ask questions. You've got to ask the questions that need to be asked, but you've also got to maintain a relationship. You might, you know, I've got to talk to this guy again next week. Um, I can't be personal. I can't be. I wouldn't want to be anyway, but you, you, you've got to you've got to find the balancing act, um, and it's not always easy. And you do sometimes forget things, and you do sometimes forget the key point because you've just come off a, a commentary. I don't, I don't think there's any anybody else who does it that way. Actually, nearly everybody else has a, a reporter on site, but because we are we are there, you know, match of days always work that way. Um, we sometimes, occasionally, we will have a reporter there. There's some grounds where it's quite tricky getting down and around the ground in time. Um, to, to meet the deadline and, and see the manager. So sometimes we do have a reporter, but 90% of the time, no, we're doing it ourselves. And um, no, there's nobody I dread. Um, and it's interesting, you've you, you made the point about after defeats. I actually find interviewing managers, for the most part, after a defeat is easier um, because they have something to say and they, they, they want to make a point about why. Sometimes after a win, it's almost like, well, you can't ask me anything because we won. So... I, I can't be questioned today, um, and 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 that makes it a little more tricky. After yeah. defeats, is, I, I mean, I'm, I'm the one that went and interviewed Sir Alex Ferguson after Manchester City won six one at Old Trafford. Oh, I must admit, walking down the touchline that day, I was a little bit, oh heck, oh my goodness me, and actually it was fine, no problem whatsoever. He said what he wanted to say. My questions actually were irrelevant. Mm. Jo Jose Mourinho was always great like that. That the questions would be completely irrelevant. He would have it in his head. I mean, very media savvy. He would have it in his head what he wanted to say full stop. and Irrelevant to the question, he would get it out there. Yeah, there's a few managers like that. Cooper was like that for us in the sense he, he yeah. was master of PR and, and, and stuff like that. And you can always catch a manager on a bad day. I was thinking when you're talking about the famous Roy Hodgson one where he said, let's not take the piss or something. He seems like a lovely guy. And Roy, is, Roy is great, yeah. Roy, Roy's always been great, yeah. I've not... I've not, I've not been on that side of Roy, but yeah, yeah, it's a pressure environment, and, and when it's not gone their way and they feel a bit aggrieved, you might be the one in the firing line that gets it. Um, I've had a few in my time, um, uh, you know, of, of all varying characters as well. People mild managed, you might think, oh, they'll be really nice with you. Mm, not necessarily. Not if you, not if you accidentally press the wrong button. Um, yeah, it's 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 part of the job. It's not a part of the job I signed up for. I, I I I love the commentary. That's kind of it. But it, it is part of the job. So um you do it and hopefully you do it to a to an acceptable level of questioning. Nuno must be all right, must he? He he, he doesn't give a lot away, but at least you know no. you're on a level playing field with him, aren't you, I think? Yeah, I, I yeah, he's absolutely fine. Very lovely guy, very you know, incredibly well mannered and respectful. Um, you know, he understands the job we're doing. And I think he gets that we're not trying to catch him out. He can be a little bit short after defeats, actually. I know I've said sometimes it's easier after a defeat, but sometimes I get the feeling I get the feeling he doesn't enjoy it, but I can tell him, neither do I. It's just part of it. You know, I, I get the feeling he doesn't. He'd rather not, but there must be a load like that. 
Uh, just a quick commentary question, if you don't mind as well. I've asked, because a lot of commentators come on here and they're, they're regulars. Do you go into games with lines that you think, oh, I really want to get this in? Or does that never work? Is that a, a pitfall? No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Maybe in the past years ago, I might have thought, well, if this happens today, I might say this. It doesn't work. We're not actors. You wouldn't deliver it right. Um, you don't know how it's going to pan out. You might have in your head an idea to make sure you don't miss the key story. If at full time, there's a certain result, make sure I mention this and you'll have a little note on your notes. Don't forget if they win, it's this, or if they lose, it means this. Um, just a little prompting note, but you never know how that's going to happen, how it's going to come about, how the goals might've been scored, when they might've been scored, how the story's unfolded. So you can't, you just can't, it's, it's not possible. Um, the intro maybe, yeah, that's semi scripted. You'll, you know, before a ball's kicked, you'll have an idea of, what to say pre-match, um, but that's it. Once the game starts, that takes care of itself. You are commentating live on on what happens. I, I don't know. I don't know how others work. Everybody does it differently, but I don't pre-prepare any line whatsoever now. Yeah, everyone who's come on, um, well, I say everyone, I've asked Fletch, uh, Colin Frey uh, from Radio Nottingham, and I've asked Seb Hutchinson, and I think I might have asked Adam Summons in it as well, and they've all said the same answer for the same reason. It just, it's inauthentic, so it's yeah. interesting to hear. It just, it, it, just, it just wouldn't work. Um, you tend to find you, 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 your brain works quite quickly during the course of the game. Um, anything you think about around the game, you, you quickly dismiss in-game as, no, that's just rubbish. But um, yeah, they, they, they just that that said, you go you go into a game and you're flying by the seat of your pants because one day it just might not you might not be quick enough. <laughs> you, you just might not come up with a line, and, and it, you do drive home. Actually, I, I have a rule of thumb, and it, it does work every time. Where the one time in ten I'll be driving home feeling, yeah, that went well. That was really good. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. I'll watch match of the day when I get home and think that was god awful. What was <laughs> I thinking? I missed this. I missed that. That was terrible. The, the nine times out of ten, I usually drive home thinking, oh, I should have done this, I should have said that. Then I'll watch it and it'll be, you know, it was all right, that. Nothing wrong with it. So, yeah, that, that works. That rule works. Uh, Mrs. Mo I think it was Mrs. Mowbray made a, a brief guest appearance oh, right. there. Okay. Oh, <laughs> That's all right. Uh, well, probably just, uh, just before we end, if people have enjoyed this, do us a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, do become a channel member uh, and give us a lovely review on iTunes and Spotify. It all makes uh, a big difference. When Do you know when your next Forest game is? Because after you've commented on a win at Anfield, fans will be very excited for you to commentate on another game. I'm old, I'm old school. It's, it's, it's all written down on paper. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an old school diary. I don't think I've got one coming up for a little while. I've got my schedule through to the end of October at the moment, and there's 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 nothing nothing in the pipeline just yet. Um, but um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll try not to ruin the next Forest game that I do. Brent, Brentford coming up first. I'll try not to ruin that for them either. Uh, well, you can ruin it if you want. I don't. We don't mind that. <laughs> we don't mind that. Right. Uh, we shall uh, leave it there. We're back tomorrow with our Brighton preview, then our Brighton opposition preview on Friday, and then post match on Sunday because it's the first Sunday game of the season. Uh, Guy, thank you very much. It's been wonderful to have you with us, and good luck to York City for the rest of the season. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, we'll be in the football league before you know it. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Uh, have a good day, everyone. And if we don't see you tomorrow, then we shall see you soon. <laughs>